as always, want to thank everyone for showing up and uh, coming to watch the webinar. We have a fun topic today. It is big blind defense in tournaments. Uh, this is a very important part of tournament poker. Uh, you're going to be facing, it's one of the more common situations you're going to face where you, you know, you post your big blind, you're going to be facing a raise and you know, you have to be playing a lot of hands because you're getting a great price. Um, and it's a, a spot where you can lose a lot of equity in tournaments and gain a lot of equity in tournaments. And, uh, the better players definitely play these big blind spots much better than the weaker players. Um, and you're always going to be a losing player out of the big blind. That's the important part, number one. You're always going to be losing because no matter what, you always have to put one big blind in the pot. But your goal is to minimize how you lose. And you should be losing less than one big blind because we're going to be making positive expectation plays after we post that big blind. So the key thing for us is going to be that... Um, you know, we're trying to minimize how much we lose posting our big blinds, and this ends up being a big part of our uh, win rate in tournaments. So this webinar topic came from a question that I got on Twitter. How do I properly defend my big blind in tournaments when facing a raise with multiple callers? Uh, so some of the topics that we're going to cover today are heads up defense. So this is gonna be defending your big blind when you are facing a single raise, both from early position, which we'll consider like an 18% opening range, and from late position, which we'll look at like the cutoff, which is somewhere around a 30% opening range. We're gonna look at multi-way defenses. So this is going to be, say, when someone opens up an early, to early position and then the button calls, and now you're the third player in the pot, or say when the cutoff calls, the button calls, and then now you're the third player in the pot. Sorry, the cutoff raises, the button calls, and now you're the third player in the pot. So all these situations and ranges are going to affect how we play and what types of hands we play a lot. So we're going to look at how we adjust uh, our defense ranges at various stat decks. So we're going to be looking at 100 big blinds and 40 big blind play. We're also going to be looking at three betting and what types of hands we should be three betting from the blinds. Uh, I want a couple of things to point out. All the examples, we're gonna assume a one big blind ante. Uh, most tournaments seem to have moved to the big blind ante. Um, if you're playing online, it's normally about a one big blind ante. Live, it's a one big blind ante. And you should be making adjustments if you're playing with no antes. Um, such as in a cash game, or if you're playing with no antes early in the tournament. I think all tournaments should start with an ante, and we play 90% of the tournaments with an ante, so we're not going to bother looking at the two levels of the tournament we play without antes. Just make your adjustment, adjustments and play tighter. Uh, all ranges that I present are going to be basic ranges. You should always be making adjustments to these ranges, whether it be being tighter or looser depending on the skill levels of your opponents, how tight they are, how loose they are. And then also, we're gonna assume all ranges are, or all raises are a two and a half times the big blind open. Um, you're gonna be making a lot of adjustments, whether it's a min raise to 2x, 2.5, or 3x. And the 2.5x open is a kind of a middle ground to look at. It's just too much material to cover if we look at all the different opening sizes. So you're just gonna have to use your intuition and make the proper adjustments. If you're facing a min raise, you're obviously gonna defend wider. If you're facing a three X, you're obviously gonna defend much tighter. Uh, some of the biggest mistakes that you see are people under defend their big blind facing a single razor. So players are much too tight out of their big blind when they're facing a single razor. You're getting a very good price to call, and you sh you're closing the action. So you, sh you can be calling with quite a few hands. Um, people do not three bet enough from the big blind versus late position opens. Uh, this is a very big mistake. Uh, late position openers have very wide ranges, and you need to be punishing them and getting good value from your good hands. Um, and picking up pots pre-flop without having to go to the flop out of position is going to help improve your equity in tournaments. 
Um, to go along with that, people are severely unbalanced in their three betting ranges from the big blind. People only tend to, the, the average player in a $300 live tournament is never three bet bluffing from the big blind. They only three bet like the strongest of hands, like ace, king, and jacks are better. And as you'll see in this webinar, that is not the correct strategy. And I will hopefully help you with that to get you a more balanced three betting range. And it's going to help you a lot because as I said, the biggest mistake people make is they are unbalanced. So players are used to playing against players with unbalanced three betting ranges. So if you start three betting with these more balanced ranges, you're going to gain a lot of equity because they're not used to seeing you three bet hands um, that are bluffs. Um, and then the final biggest mistake we see is they don't adjust their ranges versus various raise sizing positions or skill levels of opponents. So you should be adjusting your ranges versus obviously the 2x or the 3x that we talked about, the position of the opener. So we're going to look at both early position and late position. And also, you should be adjusting your ranges based on the skill level of opponent. Uh, against very strong players, you'll want to defend very, a little bit tighter. You can fold more of the marginal spots. Against weaker players, you can defend wider because you're going to realize more equity. So let's get into the meat of this PowerPoint. First situation we're going to look at is big blind defense facing a single razor from early position. So we're going to look at an 18% opening range. This would be like a anywhere from like under the gun one, under the under the gun, under the gun one, under the gun two, somewhere around there. Um, against your really tight players, maybe this is a middle position opening range, but you get the point. Uh, we're going to look at 100 big blinds, and so this range hand grid here is a kind of sample range of what I would be looking at defending versus an early position raise. And we have the call, the three bet bluff and the three bet for value. And as you can see, we are not three betting much at all. So one of the things I said is that people don't three bet enough from the big blinds. This is true versus late position against early position. You really don't want to be three betting very much at all. And there's a couple reasons why. One is we're getting a really good price. So they raised to 2.5 big blinds. We have to call one and a half big blinds to win five big blinds. So we're getting just under three and a half to one. That means we want to call with a lot of hands. And since we want to call with a lot of hands, we're going to be using a very polarized three betting strategy to protect our like flatting range. Uh, we want to kind of have a lot of strong hands in our flatting range because we're getting a good price. And that allows us to kind of flat some of these crappy hands like 7-3 suited, 6 do suited, queen do suited, jack do suited, etc. So for value, we're just going to be flatting aces and kings, ace-king suited. Uh, notice ace-king off is going to be a flat call. You can three about it. It's fine. These are kind of not hard and they don't. Just like my last webinar, these ranges aren't by rule. Uh, we have one person. Can anyone else hear the microphone? We had one person say they can't hear. I think it's just yourself, Jim. I had other people claim that they could hear. Yeah, I think it's just you, Jim. Make sure your volume is up on your computer. So these aren't very, like, just like I explained in the last webinar, these aren't hard like rule ranges. It's more the types of hands you want to be looking at. So aces and kings, ace king suited, we want to three betting. The main thing you want to keep in mind here is we're three betting very tight out of the big blind. Um, we're facing a tight opening range, so we have to three bet tighter for value. And, you know, hands like queens and jacks, yes, we can three bet for value. That is definitely going to be a positive play, but you will make more money I believe flat calling with these hands against most opponents and then check raising a lot of flops. Uh, most opponents don't put you on the stronger hands. They think you're going to three bet and it allows you to play a wider range from the blind since you have a lot of these weaker hands in your range as well. Um, Ace King off is just going to, I like flatting this hand from the big blind because your three bet looks extremely strong uh, from the big blind and Hands like ace queen off, ace jack off, ace ten off, all weaker aces like should be folding. Like ace eight suited should be folding to your three bet, ace seven suited. So you're gonna be folding out all these hands that dominate you if you start folding three betting like ace king off, ace queen off. So we're doing very little three betting versus 
early position. Um, now, we obviously want to counter these bluffs. We have 16 value combos, as you can see here. The types of hands we want to be three betting are hands that play very well post flop and can make strong hands. So we got the ace five suited, the seven six suited, the six five suited. Again, these aren't hard rules of you have to three bet these hands every time, but these are the types of hands the eight seven suited, five four suited, seven five suited, ace five, ace four suited. Those are the types of hands you're going to be three betting against the early position open. Now let's take a look at the flatting range. The flatting range. We're calling almost any two suited cards. We're just folding the seven deuce suited, eight deuce, nine deuce, 10 deuce, the sum of the suited threes, and the nine four suited. Basically anything that can't make a straight or a top pair. So you're gonna be probably doing fine against most opponents, just you can almost call any two suited cards. But the key thing I want you to look at here is the offsuit hands. One of the biggest mistakes I see players now is they know they should be defending wide from the big blind, but from early position, they defend way too wide against early position openers from the big blind. Look at how many of the offsuit hands we're folding. Ace-4 off, ace-3 off, ace-deuce off, ace-7 off, ace-6 off, king-8 off. Um, all these suited king or offsuit kings down to king-9. Only the offsuit nines we're defending, and then these connectors you know, down to 5-4 off. And the reason is, is we're playing a very, against a very tight range. And a hand like 7-5 offsuit, a lot of times is going to have two undercards. Um, an 18% range isn't even opening like pocket fours at 100% frequency. Uh, they're going to be 18% uh, range is folding like pocket deuces, threes, and fours. Um, you're going to be dominated. You're going to be making worse pairs, and your equity realization is very, very low. When I say equity realization, I'm talking about yeah, seven five off against ace king has I don't know 37% equity, something like that. But in reality, you don't. that's if the hand is checked down to the river. That's not going to happen. You're going to fold the best hand a lot of times. You're going to fold equity. You might only realize of that 38%, you might only realize like 28% of your equity. So these offsuit hands play very, very poorly against early position openers. So you can be defending very, very tight. Um, one thing I like to point out to people, if depending on how strong and how confident you are in your... Uh, post flop skills a lot of these borderline defends like five four off six five off ace five off you know the borderline ones eight four suited ten four suited they're all very like marginal ev so you're really making a very very little bit of money maybe you're making a tenth of a big blind maybe even a couple hundredths of a big blind but they're still positive so what i would say is if you're not very confident yet in your post flop skills Start folding these weaker hands like ace five off, ace eight off, even ace nine off, all these offsuit nines, and then all these like connected cards, one gap or offsuits. Start folding them, and as you get more comfortable playing post flop and navigating these marginal situations, you can start adding them back in. But depending on like your confidence level, you don't need to be taking all the marginal spots. You can kind of fold the tighter parts of this range. Um, See a few questions coming in and we'll take care of those at the end of the webinar. We'll have a good 20 or 30 minutes to answer questions. Um, now, let's look at big blind defense facing a single razor from late position. So we're looking at a cutoff open around 30, 35%. Maybe this is a really tight button opener. Maybe it's a loose hijack open, but it's kind of a good middle ground to look at. Again, 100 big blinds. First, let's look at the three betting range. Now we have a lot wider three betting range. We're three betting tens plus, ace jack suited plus, ace queen off plus, king queen suited. That brings us to 70 combos here of the uh, three bet for value. And now we're having some three bet bluffs. And this is where one of the big mistakes that people come in is they only three bet the tens plus, ace jack suited, ace queen off. And then if you're in position, you just get to fold everything or you flat your seven, six suited, your pocket sixes, pocket fives against them, and you play very, very, it's so easy to play against them. When the board comes like low cards, you just start putting so much pressure on them because they don't have any board coverage on those, those low boards. So we want hands though, like we are gonna be three betting from out of position from the big blind. So our three bet bluffs, we still wanna have a decent amount of equity, and these are gonna be hands that are um, 
you know, close between calling and three betting. So they need to be strong enough to three bet, put more money in the pot. And we like to three bet like this section of the range that is all in blue. You don't have to three bet these exact hands, but these kind of middling suited connectors, seven, six suited, eight, seven, nine, eight, ten, nine suited. Like you never really don't see people three betting ten, nine suited, but it's a really good hand to three bet from the big blind because hands like ace, ten off, king, ten off, jack, ten off, queen, ten off, uh, ace, nine off, uh, jack, nine suited, queen, nine suited. Maybe you get folds from tight folds. So you can generate a lot of folds from hands that dominate you. Um, all these suited connectors, pseudo one gappers, even suited two gappers if you want to three bet like the 10 9 suited. Some of these king eight suited are good, even. I have them as a call in this range. You can three bet some of these king eight suited, queen eight suited, ace five suited, ace four suited. And as I said before, people are used to players only three betting the tens through aces, like ace queen through ace jack suited part of the range. And kind of ask yourself, when was the last time you saw someone three bet, you know? nine seven suited from the big blind against the cutoff open i think 90 percent of people i would say in your 300 hundred dollar tournament 97 percent of them flat nine seven suited so you can get away with a lot of uh <laughs> um, what's the word i want to say you can just get a lot of get away with a ton more than you're supposed to by three betting these hands and you're just gonna start taking down pots pre-flop but you're also going to win some really really big pots post-flop with these seven, six and nine, seven suited type three bets because people don't expect you to three bet those hands. And then you got the ace five, ace four suited. Those are kind of the standard three bet polar hands. Flouting, uh, we're flouting more of the offsuit stuff now because we're against a late position open and they have a wider range. So we can flat more hands. All the offsuit aces are now calls. Whereas before we were folding all these other than ace five off, more offsuit kings, all the offsuit eights now. But we're still folding a good chunk of the offsuit uh, part of the grid here. Now we're going to look into spots that get a little more complicated. Uh, big blind defense facing multiple callers. So the first situation, again, this is going to be 100 big blinds. We're looking at early position open, middle or an early to middle position open, and then a button flat call. Um, now, this is a really big mistake people make is now they, so they under defend facing a single raise, but they over defend when they're facing a raise and calls. So it's the opposite now, because look how much tighter our defending range is now. In this one, we're folding 60% of hands. And in this one facing the early, we were folding 51%. So we're getting a better price now because there's more money in the pot, but we're folding more hands. And why, why is that? It's because of equity realization. Yes, we're getting a better price, but three ways our equity realization of hands, like say seven, five offsuit that we talked before goes down even more because there's three people. That means there's two people in the pot now that can have us dominated. Uh, there's, you know, that flat collar is going to have a lot of pocket pairs like pocket eights, pocket nines. Now we have really poor equity with 7-5 offsuit. Um, these jack-5 offsuits, when you face a hand range, or like, let's look at uh, queen-7 off. Like, queen-7 offsuit, you could be facing, like, it's very likely someone has ace-queen, king-queen, queen-jack. And then also, your 7 might not be good because you're going to see pocket 8s, pocket 9s, pocket 10s by the second player a lot. So, where um, you end up, just realizing very poor equity. We're folding more of the suited stuff now. 10-5 uh, suited. More of the suited junk is gone. All these offsuit aces are gone. All these offsuit kings are gone. Offsuit one gappers are gone. So we're folding more. And the other thing is our three bet range has changed now because there's A, extra money in the pot. So now that there's a flat call in the pot of an extra two and a half big blinds, we have more incentive to three bet and take the pot down now. Also, uh, that flat collar has a weaker range because they didn't choose to three bet. And so we're much more likely it's kind of dead money in the pot in a way. Um, so for value, we're squeezing with hands like tens, jacks, queens, kings, aces, ace, jack suited plus ace, king off, king, queen suited for value. And three bet bluff 
is kind of I already said someone made a comment Matthew made a comment about uh, is ace queen offsuit really a bluff it's a bluff in the sense of bluff isn't the right word to use when squeezing because um, preflop you really don't have any bluffs at all because you still have equity the only real like situation you have on like true bluffs is like kind of on the river when everything's already decided you know if you win the pot or not but in these pre-flop spots, you want to be three bending hands that are going to play well post-flop if you do get called. Ace-Queen offsuit uh, is a hand that plays very, very well at a shallow SPR. So as we learned from my last webinar, Ace-Queen offsuit plays much better at an SPR of 5 than it does at an SPR of 10. It's easier when it's an SPR of 5. It's easy to get the money in. When it comes queen or ace high, you're very confident. Also, when you four bet... When you get four bet, it's likely ace king is a very big chunk of the range. And so these three bet bluffs, as I put, are kind of, these are kind of hands that you're just going to be folding to a four bet um, once you squeeze. And But the thing is, is you're not going to get four bet very much. People don't four bet often enough. And people don't see people squeeze very often out of the big blind. So when they do squeeze from the big blind, it's often... A very tight range that they see and so they don't four bet very much they normally just call so there's gonna be a linear three betting range ace queen off ace ten off all these suited broadways ten nine suited eight seven suited seven six suited eight five suited these are the types of hands we're going to be squeezing um someone asked about the uh different three bet sizings yeah we're going to get into that in a second but my squeeze size is probably going to be about 5x the open from the big blind so two and a half two and a half we'll probably be making it about 12 and a half you can even be making it like 14 you should be making it pretty large and then three betting these like jack 10 suited 10 nine suited are really good again because hands like king jack off king jack suited ace 10 you're gonna get a lot of folds from dominated hands or hands that are better than yours so and then um, just keep in mind again facing early position and a call we're defending pretty tight. We're defending tighter against multiple callers than we are against single callers. That's the biggest concept here. I, I can't count how many times I see a raise and a call and people are calling with king seven offsuit because they're getting a really good price. King seven offsuit is trash in a multi-way pot three ways. I would rather you defend six three suited, five three suited. I know I don't have six three suited... Um, um, uh, someone asked why do we call a five deuce suited but not six three suited the five deuce suited I mean these hands are all borderline in here I don't care it's not a big deal if you call a six three suited I probably do but the five deuce suited has a little extra implied odds to call with because you can make a wheel when it comes like ace three four and someone can have ace king ace queen so you can win a really big pot that way so these wheel suited connected cards become uh, very good Versus the six three suited, they're going to see you're going to run into a lot of bigger pocket pairs when there's a flat collar in the middle of you. So, again, I'll hammer it home: defend tighter, multi-way than you do heads up because you have less equity realization. Changes a little bit when it's cut off and button. You're still defending tighter than you did against the original cut off open, but now you got a cut off open bet and call. Um, this goes along with the early position raise. We have a more linear squeezing range versus multiple callers. One, like I said, we want to protect our equity with dead money in the pot. So there's a dead two and a half big blinds from the button. It's not dead, but it's a weaker range and it will likely fold to the, the, the squeeze. And two, when there's a, a third person in the pot, we're less concerned with protecting our flatting range. And what I mean by that is when we're in heads up pot, so let's say we go to the flop in a heads up pot where we check the C better only has to worry about us. And if we don't have any strong hands in our range, you know, it's very easy to play against us. They can kind of blast away and we're going to be putting a lot of spots by the turn in the river. But when there's a third person, the button is kind of protecting us. So in this spot, the cutoff can't just blindly C bet against us in the big blind because he has the button who has position on us. And, you know, say the, the cutoff, wants to see bet half pot. If it's a heads up pot, we have to defend, um, when he bets half pot, we have to defend 67% of our range. Now, when it's three ways, between the button and the big blind, we have to defend 67%. So the burden is kind of on both of us and mostly on the button for the cutoff not to exploit both of us. Hopefully that makes sense. 
but there's the the MDF, the minimal defense frequencies don't change. But now there's two people that are kind of sharing the MDF. And so that's why we're a little less concerned with protecting our flatten range and we just squeeze a lot more linear. And again here, three bet bluff is kind of a uh, term I use in quotations because they're not really bluffs because we have a lot of equity. Um, these are still good hands that we're three betting, but they also play very well in three bet pots. So now we're squeezing like ace 10 suited, pocket nines, ace jack off, king queen off, all these suited nines, suited broadways. And I don't think you see anyone squeeze this wide out of the big blind. And I think you're just going to get away with bloody murder, like squeezing these types of hands. People are just going to play so poorly against your squeezing range. Um, we're defending more of the suited grid. A few more aces, but again, we're just fooling all this offsuit junk. So, again, all this offsuit junk is really trash three ways. Fold it. Suited stuff is really good. And so, I'm in these like offsuit connectors that can make straights are also very good. Uh, someone asked SPR. That was from my last webinar. SPR is stack to pot ratio. So, just is a ratio of how much money is left behind on the flop versus how much money is in the pot. Shorter stacks, so shorter stacks equals higher equity realization. We can defend almost any two cards once our, once our stack is below 20 big blinds because we have almost 100% equity realization. Once you defend with less than 20 big blinds, we can stack off post flop with any draw, any middle pair or better. And this is a key point. You want to jam hands that can get called by worse hands. So by worse, I mean hands that you dominate. And you want to jam hands that can get better hands to fold. So uh, I said 40 big blinds. We're actually going to look at 20 big blinds here. Big blind defense, 20 big blind versus an early position open. Uh, we are flatting very wide, wider than we would uh, with 100 big blinds because of our equity realization. We're now calling every suited hand. And... These green hands are going to be the all-in hands. Notice we're flatting with aces. It's going to help protect our flatting range a little bit. Ace queen or better, we're shoving. Pocket sixes are better. And then we shove a few of these king 10 suited, queen 10 suited, jack 10, 10, 9. They have those properties that like now we get king jack suited to fold, king jack off suit, king queen's going to fold. Ace jack, ace queen should be folding to our shoves. Um, same with ace five suited. We get a bunch of better aces to fold. And we're just calling, and we're very protected now on these ace high boards, king high boards. Um, I think people shove too wide in this spot. They shove like start shoving any ace, and then when they do, when the board comes ace high, they're kind of screwed, and the person just gets a bet pretty crazy on them. 20 big blinds versus the cutoff. Similar thing. We're defending extremely wide. Now we're only folding 20% of hands. We're calling 80% of hands, and... We're shoving a lot more. The better suited aces, the better off suit aces we're shoving. King queen we're going to shove now because we can get called by like king jack suit and king jack off suit. We're still shoving some of these like king nine suited, king eight, king seven. Some of these suited ace, suited nines because they can get better dominated hands to fold. And then obviously you always want to be shoving. Pairs are the best hands to shove. You know, when you have fives, you want to shove and get jack ten off suit to fold. That's a huge win for you. So... We really like um, shoving these pocket pairs. Um, I'll talk a bit. I don't have a slide on it because we didn't have time. But if you're playing like between 20 and 100 big blinds, so let's say 50 big blinds, um, same type of things apply. But with 50 big blinds, say your squeezing range here, it won't be, it's going to be a lot more like not these 8 7 suited and stuff. Like our last webinar we talked about hand playability now you'll start squeezing these king 10 offsuits king 9 offsuits ace 8 offsuit ace 9 offsuit these hands that can make really good top pair hands but also have that property of getting more dominated hands to fold so your squeezing range your three betting ranges are just going to change a little bit when you get to 50 big blinds from 100 um, if you take that information from the last webinar if you didn't watch it i recommend going back it should be on youtube um, in a summary before we get to questions for a single razor make sure you are not over folding your big blind if you're not comfortable post flop eliminate the border border borderline defense until you are multi-way make sure you're not over defending 
your offsuit combinations. Uh, make sure you, val you balance your three bets with appropriate bluffs. Don't worry about the exact combos, but more the type of combos to bluff with. On the short stack, defend wide and chuck jam the flop wide. Again, like we said, middle pair are better. Any draw, you're going to be doing just fine. And then um, pay attention to what combos you want to jam with with 20 big blinds. You can rejam a ton of hands profitably from the big blind with 20 big blinds, but a lot of hands are going to be more profitable to flat call with rather than jam. You want that property of folding out dominated hands and also getting dominated hands to call. This webinar is brought to you by PokerCoaching.com. I just want to remind everyone that you can try PokerCoaching.com free for seven days right now. I'm making hand quizzes on there. Um, I have the monthly, two monthly webinars. Um, I'm also doing uh, four written articles a month. Um, myself, Alex Fitzgerald, and Jonathan Little are providing a lot of great content on there. The annual and three-year subscriptions are great value for you to be using for a one-year subscription is $249. I guarantee you will be earning back that $249 by subscribing. You're going to be learning a lot of value. If you put the effort into it, we got over 400 interactive poker hand quizzes, over 30 coaching challenge webinars, four new hand quizzes get posted every week. Uh, Jonathan does a great job with the homework. He posts a situation. And if you do put the time in to do the homework, Jonathan will personally answer the homework questions in his monthly homework webinar. There's also uh, big discounts on the three-year membership. You get access to a bunch of Jonathan's prior, his library of webinars that he has on his website is absolutely insane. I don't even know how many hours of webinars he has on there, but with a three-year subscription, um, you get a big discount over the, the yearly price and you also get to uh, access to a few of his past webinars. Again, um, I really think the content out there is well worth the money. It doesn't take, you know, if you're playing $300 tournaments, if you can improve your win rate by 10%, 20%, which I think is very, very realistic, $30 to $60, it's only going to take you about five tournaments to make the money back. So I think, um, you know, putting the, the uh, time and the investment into your game is really important. Now we're going to take a look at questions. Um, I'm going to go back through some of these questions that have been asking, but if you have any questions, we have about 20 minutes. I'm going to go through and answer a bunch of questions. Um, yeah. So... So Matthew Rival asked about, I wouldn't three bet the queen queen in the early position. Again, it's profitable to three bet queen queen there. It's not a mistake. You can be doing it definitely some percentage of the time, but I think it's going to be more profitable or it's very close in EV to flat call. And I think queen just make, ends up making a very good flat calling hand. Uh, three bet sizings. Um, so out of position from the big blind, we're going to be three betting in the single raise pots where we're the only person it's one raise we're facing one raise we're going to be making it between four and a half to five times the big blind we're, or four and a half to five times the opening range when we're 100 big blinds deep and against the squeezing we'll probably be making it maybe a half big blind or half times more so if someone opens to two and a half x and there's a raise and a call you don't have to make it a ton bigger if we're making it four and a half X over a single open, we'll probably make it five X over the open and the call. Um, Matthew Riblas, I'm stated I'm more inclined to defend with the one gappers multi-way, although less with weaker aces. That is good. I mean, I think the one gappers are very close. Uh, you're gonna be making less nut straights with the one gappers. Uh, and but the suited the offsuit aces are just really trash multi way. What adjustments would you make if you have a lot of flat callers who seldom fold at the table? James asked. Um, the adjustment you make is you want to be calling those hands that play really well multi way. So you want to be calling with connected hands. 
and you want to be calling with suited hands. And you really want to avoid playing those trashy offsuit, like king eight off type of hands. Uh, David Gonzalez asks, uh, why not ace ace? I'm assuming you're using the 20 big blind. Um, the 20 big blind um, section, why are we not shoving with aces? Um, and with aces, if we shove, we're going to get a lot of hands to fold that we don't like. So there's a big difference between aces and kings. Like if we shove with kings and he folds ace nine offsuit, it's not a big deal with us because he could have hit an ace on the flop. We need some protection from our hand. But with aces, we need no protection at all. And we don't want him to fold king jack offsuit to our raise. We want to our shove. We want him to, to see a flop and the flop to come king or jack high. So now we're going to double up. And the the pot's going to be six big blinds, and we're going to have 17 and a half big blinds back. So it's very easy to get the money in. So there's no need to really be shoving with aces. And people are just going to stack off with any top pair or middle pair. So flatting aces is very good when you're a short stack. Greg S. asks, do I have all these ranges memorized? Any tricks to remember them all? No, I do not have all these tricks, <laughs> these ranges memorized. But like I said before, it's not about memorizing the exact combos. It's about memorizing the type of hands. And so I know versus early position, like I don't want to be defending a lot of offsuit kings. And I know somewhere around king nine off, king eight off is the you know borderline. I'm not worried about knowing as long as you're in like within like a pip or two. Like I know it's around king nine, king eight off. You're going to be doing just fine. You don't need to memorize it. Daniel, I see your question here. I actually got the email from Jonathan. I was just going to answer that. Um, so Daniel's question was, he's playing in a tournament and he's in the big blind. Early position opens to 10 times the big blind at 150 big blind. So he opens to 1500 and the button calls and we have king queen offsuit. And he was wondering if he should be calling with king queen there versus the 10 X open. And we can kind of use a couple of concepts here. One against a larger raise sizing, we're going to be um, defending a lot tighter. So we know we're gonna be defending type with king queen offsuit. We're playing like 175 big blinds deep. So the question is, yes, we should fold king queen. We should never call with the king queen to the 10x open. Um, the, to go further though, what types of hands should Daniel flat with against the 10x open from early position and a flat call when they're like 150 plus big blinds deep? You just wanna be calling with hands that can make the nuts very easily and play very well um, multi-way in a, a bloated pot. So. Those would be your pocket pairs, you know, pocket fours, fives, sixes, sevens, eights, nines, tens, try to make a set, your suited connectors, um, your suited broadways that can make, you know, flop over cards and nut flush draws and stuff like that. So you're going to be defending really tight, but I would do something like ace jack suited plus pocket pairs and then maybe a few of the seven, six suiteds. Um, but you just don't have to be calling very much when someone makes it 10 times the open. So Matthew Rebo asks, should big blind defense ranges be tighter in cash games? Yes, uh, because cash games are not played with antes, and in tournaments you defend really wide because there's an extra one big blind in the pot in the ante, which allows you to defend very wide. So you will be defending much wider from the big blind in tournaments than you do in cash games due to the antes. Uh, James, what said like? What adjustments would you be making to the early opener late caller strategy if you have three villains in the pot with you? Um, same as before, except you're going to be even tighter with these uh, trash hands. Um, you're getting a really good price. You just now you're calling probably with all the suited cards and you want to play hands that can make straights and flushes basically. Uh, what is the recommended strategy against the small blind? Is it similar to the range or defending against the button? It's kind of its own topic, but no, it's not similar to the cutoff or button. If the, if the small blind is making it two and a half X, you should be calling like playing like 90% of hands, 80% of hands. You can call very, very wide. And it's a big difference because you're in position, not out of position. Um, my next webinar, no, no, sorry. The later next month, I'll have a webinar on, small blind play and blind versus blind play in tournaments and we'll talk a little bit about that.
but in general you're going to be calling very very wide against the small blind when you're in the big blind uh, does most of this apply to online playing yes it applies both to live and online uh, David Schultz post flop how should I decide whether to check raise or donk lead on the flop when my opponent C bets um, post flop is just a whole nother game playing out of position but in general from the big blind, you can pretty much check 100% of flops and never lead on the flop. You can just blindly check from the big blind and you're gonna be doing just fine. And then you just have a check raise and a check call and check fold strategies. So you don't really need to be doing any donk leading on the flop. Um, there could be a whole nother decision on that, but that's the easiest way to play is just pure checking. Uh, Luis Felipe, say we three bet bluff a hand like ace nine suited versus late position razor and collar and both call. We make top pair with the ace. Where do we stand? Um, yeah, so now you have a, you know, you probably only have a stack to pot ratio of like three to four with ace nine suited. So you can start C betting very, very, very small, like a quarter of the pot, 20% of the pot. Um, you can kind of mix with ace nine suited checking. Um, because it'll be one of the worst hands. It depends on the it, different ace high boards play completely different. And post flop is a whole nother time and strategy. But in general, you can start putting out like really small 15 to 20% continuation bets, and you're going to be doing very fine on those ace high boards. Thank you, David Gonzalez, for the compliment. I appreciate it. Chris Chuck Broyles, does the big blind ante have any effect on this? Uh, no, it does not. But what does have an effect is the size of the ante. So if you're playing like, if you're still playing with like a standard ante, there's some levels where the ante is bigger than one big blind, or there's some levels where it's less than one big blind, or some tournaments the big blind gets reduced to half of a big blind when you're shorthanded. So the size of the big blind, or the size of the ante is definitely going to make a issue or make a. Um, a problem not the um, big blind ante itself yes Kim Lorraine what about the same situations where there's good and bad players how does that affect your range like I said at the beginning these are kind of base ranges against good players I'd start folding some of the marginal stuff against bad players I would actually defend wider than these suggested ranges these suggested ranges are you know against like good players and these are like the tightest you should ever go and you can always go looser against weaker players that aren't going to put you in tough spots post-flop. So Christopher O'Neill, when playing with a lot of amateurs who tend to open from to three to three and a half X from all positions, do you recommend to tighten up or three bet more? If three betting more, what sizing would you recommend for 30 to 50 big blinds deep? So the larger the open, when they're making it three and a half X, you're going to flat call a little bit less because you're getting a better, pr worse price and you're going to three bet more. And the reason is, is because there's more money to be one post flop now by three betting and taking down the pot um, than just flat calling and seeing a flop now. So I would start three betting a higher percentage of hands against these three and a half X opens and you know, 30 to 50 big blinds deep, you know, 50 big blinds deep. If they're opening to three and a half X, maybe I'd open. I three bet to like 12x, 13x. You don't have to make it as big because they already made it big for you. Would you increase the three bet frequency in online tournaments? Increase the ranges a little bit? Uh, no. These the ranges are all based on what ranges your opponent plays. So it's a matter of if it's they're looser or if they're tighter. So you have to make you make the adjustments based off they're looser or tighter, not whether it's online or live. Uh, Miguel, do you adjust for how deep you are in a tournament? Uh, ICM, if you get to like the final table or final two tables of a tournament, ICM will definitely affect these ranges. So if you're at like the final table or final two tables and you're facing a raise in the big blind, these a lot of the like cuspy hands, like seven, six offsuit, five, six offsuit, all these, the, the 
fringe hands are going to be clear folds now because you're not playing for chips. You're playing for money in the ICM. That's a whole nother discussion, but you're going to be wanting to play tighter when ICM is a factor, like on the bubble of a tournament. You know, if you're on the bubble, you don't want to be defending, you know, six deuce suited when you're one of the short stacks in the bubble because you're trying to cash um, or at the final table because there's pay jumps, etc. Uh, Greg S, do you have any advice for keeping track of the chip stacks at a live tournament? Uh, yeah, like every like 10 minutes or so, or I do it like every time the button hits the one seat, maybe I'll do it. I'll go around and just keep note of how many big blinds everyone has at the table. I'll make a mental note so I don't have to ask every time. Or I just kind of know. I also don't keep track of it in terms of how many chips they have. I keep track of it in my head in terms of how many big blinds they have. Uh, Sean Tracy, what happens to your three betting range is the number of people calling the original racer increases past one caller. Um, you can start squeezing a little bit wider as the more callers are in, you're going to increase your squeezing range because there's more money to be taken down pre-flop. So you're incentivized to play aggressive and take those pots down pre-flop. So the more callers, the wider you can squeeze. Um, Matthew stated, I generally defend with any two cards versus small blind raise against a small raise. Yes. Some players raise way too tight against the, um, the small raises. And so, um, yeah, your defense, you're going to be doing just fine. Probably defending any two cards. It's better than the opposite. Uh, in the multi-way case, would your defense range be substantially wider if the one caller were on the small blind rather than the button? Uh, not substantially wider, but it would definitely would be wider because you're, you're now you're only out of position against one player and you have relative position. So relative position is important. So assuming the small blind checks and you check every time and then the in-position player bets, you get to see what the small blind does every time before you have to act. So... Uh, that's why another reason why you can defend very wide and just being in position on the small blind helps you a little bit, but I wouldn't defend incredibly wide, especially because the small blind is normally a very tight, confined, um, flatting range. How does the skill level of villains interact with these ranges against weaker opponents? I will defend wider than these ranges. I'll never go tighter. Uh, yes, David, I will be at Choctaw in May. Kevin said, yes, they, you had these ranges reversed with a single razor versus multiple. Everyone does. It's one of the bigger mistakes you see. You need to be tighter multi-way and looser heads up. What James Sedlak asked, what would you defend the big blind with versus an open jam? Uh, only the green ones? No. So that's a completely different topic, you know, calling versus 10 big blind opens. So, um... Yeah, it's a completely different topic. There's calculators out there to show you how to perfectly defend against, you know, shoving ranges, what to hands to call with. So you can kind of work with those and do the work on your own. Um, but there, um, no, you don't want to be calling with the, the green ones. Darren Jackson asks, what adjustments to six max? Um, obviously, we want to widen up, but there's less players. Do we squeeze tight? Um, it's just now that your early position opener is going to be, you know, middle position so it's gonna be wider ranges so you're gonna be defending a lot more and uh your squeezing ranges are just gonna come up much more often because you're gonna be facing late position opens and late position callers more so it's just the frequencies are higher just because it's always a late position open uh any other questions before we wrap this up Uh, this webinar should be on YouTube. The slides are not public, but the, the webinar will be on uh, YouTube as far as I know. All right. If there's no other questions, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, I have two web webinars scheduled for next month. 
I believe it's April 9th and April 24th, but I need to double check those dates again. But um, two webinars scheduled, I believe they are on, the first one is on polar versus polar and linear three bedding ranges. And the second one is on blind versus blind play. So more of this blind versus, you know, playing out of the small blind and big blind. So uh, thanks guys again. Hope you appreciate it. Keep working hard. Um, if you haven't yet signed up, you know, poker, think about the investment at pokercoaching.com. Um, like I said, I think you're going to earn back that investment very, very quickly. Um, put the effort in, put the work in and good luck at the tables, everyone.